Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Exordia Creative Podcast. I'm your co-host, Quentin Solomon. I'm Jared Lund. And with us today, we've got Taylor Hughes from the Small Business Center, or ECDEV. Hey, Taylor. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. being here. Of course. Here. You're our very you first guest. Oh, I know. I feel special. Awesome. Hopefully, I'll be able to back, come back for an anniversary session or yeah, something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, um, we're here today to talk a little bit about uh, what Taylor does uh, at ECDEV and a little bit of his personal story, where he grew up and where he came from and uh, some, some tips for some small business owners and new people starting businesses. So, yeah. So let's, let's start with your personal story. How long have you been at ECDEV and what did you do before that? Were you born and raised in Chatham-Kent? Uh, so I grew up in uh, Chatham-Kent predominantly. I moved to Chatham when I was young, like two. I uh, spent most of my time in Chatham growing up through grade eight, finished grade school, and then I head on down the Western Highway 401 to Amherstburg for about 10 to 12 years in that vicinity. Cool. Uh, I got a marketing diploma for kind of my post-secondary education through St. Clair. Uh, and then spent a little bit of time in the Navy and the Naval Reserves for about five years. And then oh, cool. uh, kind of helped subsidize my schooling while I was going through everything. And then uh, found my missus back home in chatham Kent and uh, married and moved back here and back. got a job with the municipality. Nice. Yeah, so. So did you start in economic development or did you? So I've, I've actually, I've bounced around quite a bit yeah. throughout uh, the municipality. When I first started, I was on an uh, 18 month contract uh, as a bylaw enforcement assistant in the building bylaw department. So I ended up spending about <clears throat> two and a half years uh, in that department. And then I got a permanent full-time position in social housing. Uh, so I spent about just about three years in social housing with the municipality and then nice. But a year and a half ago, I uh, put the marketing diploma to use and finally got into economic development and the small the small business center specifically to act as a business consultant and hopefully uh, provide some uh, advice and recommendations for people like yourselves, uh, for, for sure. entrepreneurs, yeah. small business owners, existing, whatever. Uh, yeah, Taylor, Taylor's been a, a really big help to us as far as, he's, he's, he's not only really good at what he does, but he's also great just for, you're just great for bouncing ideas. Oh, I appreciate that. Like, you know, like whenever we're about to make a major decision yeah. or something like that, we always have that third party that we can come to and ask questions. Taylor, you were one of the first people to see our new logo. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah uh, I remember that. You were the one who told us it was too red, so yeah. we made it a little bit more. We toned it down. Hope a everybody bit. loves it. By yeah. the way, <laughs> they're dropping that one on me, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, no, yeah. I think your logo looks. But that's funny that and... that you say you have the marketing degree because like you you're doing so much of that on Instagram and economic development as a whole. Yeah, they market what's going on here, but like you are always showing love to all the new businesses, yeah. the more established businesses. Mm -hmm. Us, everyone, and like we really appreciate that. We think that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I do my best to be able to share as much as the amazing stuff that's going on here, right? And raising a family in Chatham Ken, I got a lot of love for the community. Yeah. Um, and sometimes there's some uh, negativity that surrounds what's going on around here, but there's so much positive that it's uh, there's too much positive not to talk about it, right? It's true, and it, I feel like the positive just isn't shared enough. That's right, and that's one of the reasons why we actually wanted yeah. to start as well. Is we to talked help about that last week, right? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Mm -hmm. So. So what does your average day look like? You're an economic economic development officer. So what is your average day like? Are you in meetings all the time? or? <clears throat> so I, honestly, ever, there's no routine day. The only routine is hopefully getting to work by 8.30 and there hasn't been a meeting before that. <laughs> uh, and then getting started on whatever that day is going to be. So yeah. uh, meat and potatoes of what I do is uh, by title right now as an economic development officer, but primarily my role is acting as a business consultant through the Small Business Center. Okay. Uh, so uh, what... The majority of what we're doing is, is business consultations. We're helping people register businesses if they're needing a master business license. Uh, if they're looking at HST information, they want to register for an HST number. Those, these are all kind of value-wide services that we'll also do. Yep. Uh, a lot of these things people can do on their own, but uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming if it's not something they've ever done before. It was overwhelming mm -hmm. for myself uh, prior to ever uh, doing it before, right? But uh so for instance a master business license you can lay on your bed at home and do it on your computer for 60 bucks you can come down to the small business center with one of uh, myself and my colleagues yep. uh doug or matt and you can also have them uh, do it for you for 60 bucks uh, so what happens a lot of the time is that somebody will google master business yep. license and they'll fork out 150 to a third-party service provider not realizing that it only ever costs 60 dollars. yeah we right? still see those ads there's a third party that mm -hmm. you can do it through yeah, yeah. i see yeah. them pop up through my uh, instagram home yeah. quite often yeah um, so you're surrounded by a small business all the time. Yes. Does it ever make you kind of want to start like a side hustle or anything like that? Absolutely. Uh, so what I can see and I can say with absolute uh, certainty is that running, operating, being an entrepreneur and yeah. uh, doing your own thing is, is probably the most fulfilling 
uh, kind of option that you can take out there, right? As soon as you start a business and you see it start becoming more successful as the uh, time goes by, then there's nobody, there's no other, there's no more happiness, I think, that or more value that I think you can find uh, out there doing things. So I find a lot of value in the role I'm in because I'm able to help people uh, yeah. go down that path. Uh, but at the same time, too, <clears throat> you're definitely chomping out the bit to uh, try and get into something probably in the e-commerce uh, side of things. Oh, that's cool. cool. Speaking mm -hmm. of that, our friend Greg is actually hosting a, an e-commerce event. At SOAR. At SOAR. In yeah, the next, it's late uh, February. It's in late February. Yeah, a couple weeks from now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did I hear that you also were at an e-commerce Shopify event recently? Uh, so I didn't go to an e-commerce Shopify event. Uh, my colleague Matt Riem and myself went down to Toronto um, so Andrew Patricio is a, a third party uh, operator that facilitates our starter company plus program. Nice. Um, but what he also does in Toronto uh, is operate biz launch and they just ran a scale up uh, mm -hmm. program. So, uh, that guy's a stud. He's phenomenal. He's provided us with, uh, with some framework to go forward with running a scale up program. So we went down and see, uh, seen him firsthand facilitate it to a room of 25 uh, small business owners from the GTA and now we look to hopefully implement this program to chat and cat in our community uh, at some point in the in the summer coming forward hopefully in the summer I think is when we tentatively uh, put it in there but That's awesome. Awesome. so uh, yeah we saw pictures on your Instagram of the Shopify place it looks looks pretty insane oh sorry I wasn't even thinking so I was at a business pitch competition uh, oh was it, are these two different things yeah oh, okay. <laughs> yeah sorry so there's a not-for-profit in Toronto uh, it's called business in the streets uh, and what they do is they kind of run similar programming to what our small business center does, but just mm -hmm. on a not-for-profit side. So they get funded through different, uh, like RBC is a big uh, funding partner for them or whatever. But they'll run a 10-week program. And at that end of the 10 weeks, they'll have all their uh, participants go through and, and pitch uh, to a panel of judges. So I've now sat on two panels of judging uh, for these kind of Dragon Den style pitches uh, to That's provide fun. some feedback. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. And uh, great networking opportunities again to see, you know, Chad Kent's amazing, uh, but it's always fun to kind of get a little reinvigorated by being in the city and kind of energize and see there's just so much happening there, right? Definitely. So uh, not to say that I'm going to go to Toronto and think that what's happening in Toronto and what works in Toronto is automatically going to work yeah. here, yeah. but there's definitely little pieces of the puzzle that you can kind of uh, start putting into place and just however I can add value is what I'm looking to do, right? Yeah, so, yeah awesome. Uh, yeah, those competitions are cool. So on that, touching on um, what, what works in Toronto might not work in, in Chatham-Kent, so to speak, what kind of trends do you see in Chatham-Kent as far as the business community goes? Like, like what, what are you seeing firsthand? Uh, more and more and more collaboration. <clears throat> uh, so, and, and first and foremost, when I'm going through a business plan with people yeah. and I hit the competitive analysis side of things, uh, I, I'm no longer really touting it as a competitive analysis. I'm kind of calling it a collaborative analysis. Uh, people are really starting to realize that there's a lot of pie out there for everybody to eat. Uh, cool. Yeah. You know, passing clients back and forth. You know, if it's something that's, you know, is in somebody else's wheelhouse and you're not necessarily great at, well, then you're sending it to this this other business owner and it's going to reciprocate coming back your yeah. way, right? Because at the end of the day, everybody has strengths, everybody has weaknesses. If you can identify these things and you can start really starting to uh, collaborate and adding, again, just continuing to add value in the community. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest trends is just seeing everybody working together, the, <clears throat> the sharing, everything that you see through social media. I uh, don't want to just get crazy with throwing business names out here and stuff like that but i'm sure everybody's heard of bull cream yeah uh, yeah bull her cream. instagram is booming yep same with uh, uh, ck moms, CK moms. that's yeah. my next one they're yeah. absolutely booming Definitely. right but it's because of all the love that yep. they're sharing for yep. everybody right so uh i think that's a huge trend and i <clears throat> not just ck in general i think that's uh, pretty probably getting into the global national end of things that yeah. it's happening more and more often there's definitely some dog eat dog worlds out there still that uh it's not necessarily happening in but uh that's one of the big trends i see is just uh the amount of sharing each other's uh working as much as uh, yeah. worrying about their own that's cool that you see that at a macro level because mm -hmm. i know like we love working with other marketing companies and um even the ones that we don't work with like i think it's healthy to have that that competition because like you were saying absolutely like, there's a it's a big pie right for sure and everybody can have a piece and i think like for uh, social media services, like what we do, you know, a couple of years ago, it was hard to legitimize ourselves, but having competition does kind of legitimize your service and, and Most definitely. establish it. Yeah. But that's so, awesome. <clears throat> Collaborative analysis. From when you started um, in this role to now, do you see an influx in more people starting businesses? Like, is there definitely growth? Like, do you see Chatham Kent growing 
I definitely see Chatham Kent growing just, I mean, and not only just because of the housing development and stuff like that that you see, but uh, I forget who I was speaking with the other day, but uh, we've never had a more diverse community ever either, right, from a multicultural right. standpoint. Yeah. Uh, somebody had mentioned, you know, I was driving down the street uh, and I saw really like every walk of life getting on the school bus. Mm-hmm. And like, that's amazing, yeah. right? Like, so uh, the migration that's coming to Chatham Kent from all these different areas is, is, is going up and up. And the opportunity... Um, on the business side, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going gangbusters from um, new businesses and necessarily the brick and mortar front uh, all over the place, yeah. but uh, in the like in the home based business options and like when I start talking about uh, potentially getting into entrepreneurship myself and getting into the e commerce world, uh, I can do that in my t shirt tuxedo yeah. in my basement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's a really big influx in the amount of uh, home based businesses that are starting to spawn up from a e commerce side of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if it's just like the gig economy side hustle stuff where it's uh, a fiber related job, somebody's doing some graphic design or uh, animation or whatever the case may be or proofreading. Um, so I see that going crazy. That's that's what a, a lot of the stuff that comes uh, comes yeah. through the offices. Yeah. Uh, just you know, how can I legitimize something? How can I definitely monetize a hobby uh, and those sorts of things? I do recall. So I started an e-commerce company a couple of years ago, and we sold dad hats. I talked to both yeah. of you guys about it. You guys both knew about it. And that is one thing that I really struggled with. And I don't know if you meant this the same way but my business didn't feel like a legitimate business because there was really nothing physical. Mm-hmm. And so that was always weird for me in, 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 mm-hmm. uh, in e-commerce. But yeah, just a side note. Let's see, for me, on the other hand, uh, what gets me really chomping at the bit and getting that kind of itch to get going on is uh, speaking with other people yeah. who are running e-commerce sites, and not from a drop shipping standpoint, not that that's not a, another phenomenal opportunity that exists yeah. today, yeah. Uh, but from just like never having to handle a product, never having to be the face of something, but being able to start a for instance a Shopify e-commerce store and yeah. uh, the person I'm thinking of is uh, netting about 70k a year wow uh, that's and awesome that's, and that's a side hustle yeah right? that's fantastic so, it's, uh, not to say any but you listening it's far from yeah. a light switch yeah uh, like you can tell anybody you know social media marketing is not a light switch that's one of the common misconceptions you know people think you're going to start something flip the switch and it's going to be rocking but yeah. you know take some time you got to gain that traction traction sorry start yeah building your following when we started uh the e-commerce company it took us two months to get our first sale yeah well, they're, they're right, like there's, right? There's, that's there's one sale that's one sale but then yeah. after that it, it's it all really does come down to social media marketing though from Definitely. well in, in my opinion it does yep. and that's what worked for us um and then as soon as you get that look-alike audience going on facebook then it just kind of generates itself and for sure yeah for sure yeah yeah i think a huge it, 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 Social media, digital marketing, obviously, yeah. it can't be ignored. It, it, yeah. it is where most things are now. But the yeah. uh, fact remains is, is just where's your audience, right? Who, who are you targeting this product to? And not everybody that you're targeting a product to is, is going to be on digital media. They're likely going to be on traditional media. So it's just uh, having a clear-cut understanding of who's going to be purchasing mm-hmm. the product, who you expect to target the product yeah. to. For uh, sure. Griffin, especially a product like dad hats very specific kind yeah that of was like very and it was it was kind of, we kind of got it in the niche it was kind of niche at that time um i don't know how other dad hat companies are doing now <laughs> i wish them luck yeah um but yeah so what i think we're going to kind of hop back a little bit yeah. well actually at first i want to talk to you about what social platforms that you use yourself yeah. like what are you using and what do you find effective for for you you're killing it on LinkedIn. Yeah, you're all over LinkedIn. Foremost. Yeah, so LinkedIn, 100% from the professional kind of mm-hmm. standpoint view. Um, I'm not a, I'm not big on content creation myself, so a lot mm-hmm. of stuff that I'm doing is just kind of again, even through my Instagram, but it's it's sharing what I see other people yep. doing that I that I yep. can kind of uh, agree with, or I find that there's some value in this, and hopefully people who are following me will also find the value in what's being kind of reshared. Uh, or people who I see doing great things in the community and they just need to kind of have some love shown to them, uh, whether they are or they aren't already. Um, But Instagram and LinkedIn are probably my two uh, bigger ones that I use personally. Um, I've honestly started to dislike Facebook uh, and Facebook is my generation, my era's (laughs) like tried and true. And uh, so I'll tell you a little quick story on that one is basically when I started in this new role, um, I created a new Facebook page uh, and spawned a business page off of it, uh, so I could kind of send some traction that way and hopefully again share some uh-huh. uh, share some value, valuable information. But what happened was is that I was absolutely bombarded uh, with with random friend requests from absolutely every piece of the friggin' world. 
uh, and it be honestly it just annoyed me to the point that I don't use Facebook anymore. Okay. Like I'll get on there from time to time. I'll be on there. Th- uh, we'll be trying to revamp and get back onto the uh, small business side to share some more through it. Um, but Instagram, I just found so much cleaner. It's completely I content driven. Yeah. I can read the whole caption if I want to read the caption. Yeah. Facebook absolutely has uh, an immense amount of value. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, if I get to the e-commerce side of things for my own business in the future, then yeah, I'll definitely be looking at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but at this point, it's just uh, it's just like a voicemail notification on my phone that I don't want to see. Right. <laughs> right. Do you uh, use the Messenger platform at all for? Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, if, I, if I'm getting if I'm getting uh, if I'm receiving messages, then I'll try and be as adamant as possible. But going through there, uh, same with uh, direct messaging on Instagram and stuff like that. Um, but honestly. Uh, Facebook, I, I really stay away from. Uh, it's something that I'll absolutely kind of advise on and, and provide recommendations for yeah, because yeah. it's 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 a must for business. Yeah. Um, regardless of exactly who your target is, you should be on there for no other reason than it's a f- free platform. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll message on it as on kind of an as necessary uh, as required basis. I want to make it as easy as possible for any client to get in touch with me. Right. Uh, convenience sure. is number one for sure. For sure. Yeah. Mm. So how often would you say that you uh, that you recommend? A, a business go on LinkedIn, for example? Uh, so I definitely think it's going to be determined by what sort of business you're in. Mm-hmm. Do I think dad hats need to be on LinkedIn? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you're running like uh, any form of professional firm, whether it's accounting, whether yep. it's a, a legal firm, um, or just any kind of what you may consider like professional corporation, yeah. uh, I think definitely makes sense to be on there. Um, and I guess anything that's going to start having a the, the brand or the image or the perception of this business or company is going to be more than a person, right? So if I'm just an individual person or I'm acting as a sole proprietor, I'm, I've, I've incorporated, but I'm a 100% shareholder and it's me, then maybe I can be the face of the business. And then it, as I grow and scale up in the future, it makes more sense to kind of transition gotcha. into having that business page as well. Yeah. Um, whereas there's other businesses, I think that uh, should be right there off the, off the jump. Mm-hmm. Uh, just depending, I guess, if that makes sense. We've been really, we've been getting a lot of traction um, off LinkedIn. I actually had a meeting this morning yeah. and the person found us on LinkedIn mm-hmm. first and then came to our Facebook page to message us. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah. That was the first time I ever heard anybody coming to us from LinkedIn. So yeah. that was cool. I, I heard, heard more and more about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the sense of converting. Mm-hmm. I heard an interesting observation about it where LinkedIn's user base is huge, bigger than ever, and it's growing fast. Mm-hmm. But not a lot of people are jumping to content creation. Kind of yes. like, as, not nearly as much as Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. So there's this very tiny supply of content and this huge audience. So it's easier to get seen. And we notice like, um, when we look at maybe something you post or something that we post, it stays on the home page for weeks, sure. weeks sometimes. at a time. Yeah. Whereas Instagram, you refresh and it's gone. Right. You we know. we still have yeah. people liking and interacting with our podcast that we posted on LinkedIn from last week. Yeah. No kidding. And like, yeah, exactly what Jared said. Yeah. I see stuff from you from three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, wait, that was three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I've yeah. actually I've noticed that kind of stuff too. Yeah. I do. Uh, I do think some of that falls prey into the what you're liking. Mm-hmm. kind of a thing too yeah, what, sure. uh, like what you're what you're actually liking and stuff like that it's going sure. obviously yeah what you're interacting with sort of popping yeah. up a little bit more which yeah. is one of the biggest things that uh, has I guess upset me in, in the past decade let's say whereas it was it was hard for me when I was a when I was a Facebook user and they were changing how their home feed was going to work from being recent posts to what I click like on yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh, I want to see what's happening, not yeah. just the stuff that I've liked in the past, right? Yeah, 100%. And Instagram's the same way. Kind of gets now, you in your every, own every, Everything is anymore, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's kind of, I don't want to get into my, uh, my conspiracy theories <laughs> here, but, but at the Let's end of the do day. it. I think you should hash them out. What's yeah. your conspiracy theory? I think we all brainwash ourselves. <laughs> No, it's, it's, I, I, I think know, it's true. We all, we're all in our own bubbles. Quinton yeah. actually put out a video about a little bit of how the Instagram algorithm works. Yeah, I saw and, it, yeah. and you're right, because like it's like this positive reinforcement mm-hmm. loop, right? You yeah. like something, you see more of it, exactly. and of course you're going to like exactly. it. Exactly. It's what you're and it's seeing. huge for like politics and stuff, yeah. right? 100%. If I start searching for a pro something on Google, what's going to pop up in my Google home feed more than not is that yeah. pro something I've been searching for. Exactly. So exactly. it's no longer just a television yeah. that does it, right? Yes. Yeah. We kind of feed it to ourselves, but... 
yeah. another bridge across that bridge another day. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about what you were saying about Facebook, though, they are changing the home feed again. I, I was, yeah, you're mentioning that they have kind of the beta testing going right now, right? Yeah. With this, uh, I, we've seen it. It looks beautiful. It's much cleaner. Yeah. It's, it's much cleaner. It's way better. Yeah. Perfect. We're actually going to be putting out a video on some of the changes that are coming to all the platforms this nice. year. So they're kind of trying to make the mobile app and yeah. the desktop version more and more similar. Yeah. Very so cool. I think it's pretty cool, but we don't know when we're going to get to get to use it yet. One of our clients has it already, though. Yep. He has oh, it no personally, yeah. yeah. it's pretty awesome. So, sweet. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm all for it. It's, uh, it's kind of time. Yeah. Like, it's kind of, it's clean and concise to a degree, but there's just so much on, on every Facebook. And it's their feed, strength right? and their weakness. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all that information is so overwhelming. I do think you, so, yeah. Do you guys consume any Facebook Watch, like some of their, their uh, original content? Uh, what do you mean? What, I believe Ballers is on there. Do you watch Ballers? Or really? Is yeah, yeah. Like, there's a Facebook I've never even heard I don't watch any. No. no, neither do I. Neither do I. I'm really like, loyal to YouTube. I, yeah, I really to. don't go to uh, Facebook to watch stuff. What do, where do you watch your stuff? Uh, primarily, I guess, Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jack, my mom's satellite. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> whatever, whatever we can do. But honestly, uh, with, with the kid at home, it's essentially Paw Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chase and rubble getting yeah. you out of trouble yeah all that good stuff um, but if, if we're watching stuff it's it's usually uh, just sports on, on TV or something yeah. or, uh, or Netflix or something but you're into tech aren't you like you're uh, yep nice. yep nice. yeah I've probably uh, what's that what phone do you have I have a Note 9 nice. at the moment yeah nice. um, Samsung's coming out with the S20s or whatever right now yeah I have a buddy who uh, works for a place out of uh like shorts comes here and they go to ces every year and oh cool it's pretty uh pretty wild show obviously and mobile world congress is another pretty Sweet. wild one too but honestly I've, I've probably fallen off the bit a little bit uh just with uh with adulting as of late yeah uh, you know work the For sure. nine to five and then get home and try and figure out if we're getting into a new house or if we're what the heck's cooking because my wife's commuting from sarnia yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know so i've just been a little bit uh, more immersed in in life than uh hobby i guess at this point but Fair definitely enough. yeah feel that feel that i i want to ask just because we we're talking about it and forgive me if this is too personal but jump in as a parent how do you regulate media and youtube and watching paw patrol and all that because the landscape is nothing like yeah you know what like? it's kind of crazy and i'm uh i'm for as long as absolutely possible i'm not going to sit here and uh and put my <laughs> words into history yeah. and say my kid's not going to get a, a access to a tablet and stuff like that. We, uh, we will show him this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Um, we just moderate what he's watching, honestly. Yeah. Uh, half the time, let's be real, half the time that we're putting on the TV is so that we can sit down for five minutes yeah. uh, and just take a break for a yeah. second, right? Um, but a lot of uh, a lot of what it is is just making sure that what he's watching there's something to take out of it. So for instance, on YouTube, he will get stuck to the screen if this like GTA rendered style Spider-Man and Marvel dudes are riding a bike and jumping through yeah, just right. some weird created course or balls are falling. It's just, it's, it's weird. And there's literally nothing educational about it. And all he says, if we let him watch it was Spider-Man motorcycles, yeah. Spider-Man, Spider-Man motorcycles. I have a nephew that watches that same thing. And it's just like, yeah. so now it's, sorry, dude, that's broken. Like it doesn't work. And you can watch this show that you enjoy, but it's also kind of providing yeah. some form of educational content. But it's hard, right? And it's uh, yeah. it's actually fascinating to see how quickly uh, that they can pick up on on the function, the functionality yeah. of things, right? Yeah, watching a kid go through a tablet is nuts. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Do you use YouTube Kids app? I haven't yet, actually. Okay. I, just, I just saw... We, so we have a Netflix Kids account or whatever right. that we'll set up in that sense. Um, and then if you, if you went onto my YouTube right now, you would see uh, Blippi... Uh, everything kid oriented so it's essentially a kid's <laughs> account yeah. just from recent searches again here we go right. on the, on the yeah. flippy side yeah. right um, but no actually I saw it the other day though that they had it uh, yeah. uh, you can try YouTube kids or whatever so I'm kind of curious about it but I haven't done one yet S speaking of that I don't know the exact statistics so maybe someone in the comments can fill us in but uh, we just wrapped up 2019 and I heard that of the top five I think highest earning creators like two or three of them were kids yeah. and I think two of them were under 10 and Ryan's toys. Yeah. Ryan's toys. There's, there's this huge trend. You probably know about yeah, it. Yeah. It's reviewing it's toys and it's yeah. crazy because this audience is super sought after by the marketing industry, yeah. right? It's these young kids form their opinion while they're young and everything can be monetized yeah. because it's all child friendly content. So advertisers are having a heyday right, on this. Right. Right. So there are kids, 
you know, a fraction of our age earning tens of millions. Yeah. And they're a, they're a majority of the, the top earners right now. It's mind blowing. Right? I think it's crazy. So you've got like having a child, you have the first hand. Yeah. So, you, you know, one of the, on. on the other side of the coin for that, one of the, uh, the negative pieces is that there's, um, some people, uh, like some parents that are kind of getting in trouble for uh, like, exploitation like, exactly you know fair enough your, though yeah because sometimes it is gross like i've watched a royan uh, sorry a royan i've watched a ryan's toy review before and like i get it but then i then i scale it back and i bring it back logically i'm like this is actually kind of weird yeah because this kid doesn't really get anything the kid the parents are kind of exploiting this kid yeah. so i don't really know how i feel about it either it's interesting to yeah. a degree like in some of them uh you know, it's it's kind of weird in the sense of here's here's a toy or something, and you're being provided it for free to get on your channel and provide the re- review or something, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas there's other ones where I can see it kind of starting harmlessly, where it's like the kids playing dress up with his buddies, and then a, yeah. a parents just like videotaping their Batman scene, yeah. or something. But even in that sense, right? Then they start kind of coaching him into okay, like, all right, kids, it's yeah. week two. Yeah. Uh, it's, last it, week was fun. It was it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Yeah, it's Schedu- a, scheduling play dates. Yeah, whole new territory for yeah. legislation and how we're going to regulate it. Yeah, it's I, interesting. It's sure. all so new, you know. Mm-hmm. Like ten years ago, it's a, it's incredible that twenty year olds are billionaires. Right, yeah. and now we're looking at you know ten year olds. Yeah, earning yeah. multi millions. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. It was the scary part is that hopefully uh, as like general society, people don't start really start counting down the days, right? Because I know as myself growing up and then you hit the 30 mark or whatever and you're like, okay, what have I accomplished on on the society's like what society kind of perceives as an accomplishment yeah. uh, when you're measuring up to when you're benchmarking against 10 year old Ryan or whatever, right? So it's <laughs> like, I hope the five year old kids not like, man, I really got to get working on monetizing something yeah. because I got to do it by... The success story of 10. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, crazy. I think it's important that you don't focus on that too much, though. Definitely. Comparison is, is a, is a tough thing. Yeah. Oh, and it's, it doesn't matter. No. At the end of the day, no, right? It doesn't. Uh, lose sleep over something that means it nothing. Doesn't. That's probably part of the reason why, why it took off. I mean, I don't know what Ryan's toys or how those creators feel about it now, but like, that's just something so probably inherently interesting to them, like kids and toys. Yeah. Of course, they like it. You yeah. know, they weren't doing that for ulterior motives. Yeah, they're just doing it because they like it. But maybe now it's it's tainted, right? Like yeah. maybe the parents, the parents are pushing that. Yeah, yeah. who knows? I don't know. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's all brand new. It's insane. Yeah. I'm gonna jump a little bit. Yeah. So, what's your favorite part of your job? Helping people. Uh, that was, you know, that was like the most value I could ever have when I was working in social housing. Any, honestly, any, any role I've had in the municipality, but <clears throat> social housing, I, there was so much value to be able to help um, maybe a, a vulnerable sector or uh, people who maybe just hit a speed bump and, and needed that pat on the back, right? So uh, the value in helping somebody is, is phenomenal. And mm-hmm. uh, in this role, I'm, I'm able to do the exact same thing. Different kind of circumstances, obviously, but uh, that's, that's what I like most about what I'm yeah. doing is that I get to see uh, two young bucks like yourselves becoming successful every every day of the week kind of thing, right? And um, <clears throat> if I've, you know, provided 1% of uh, help in that sense, right, then that's that's a boatload of value for myself. Absolutely, yeah. No, so, you provide a more than, more than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 1%. Sure, but that's, uh, that's definitely uh, the best part of the job. Uh, I get to work with a couple good guys and they're, yeah. uh, they're fun too and a, a good department and everything like that too so that's always a, a added uh, added bonus uh, in, the, in the corporate world but uh, yeah the value I can provide to clients is uh, definitely awesome. the, the best piece of it for sure awesome mm-hmm. plus you get involved in so many different industries and niches yeah and I guess that's the other that. thing is uh, the amount I, I get to learn and your right. networking too <clears throat> yeah. yeah the amount of networking you get to do yeah and a little yeah. bit of everything so it's uh, there's, definitely, there's definitely a lot of advantages uh, yeah what I'm doing, but yeah, it comes back to helping people for sure. Good stuff. I think we should also let everybody know that, like, economic development and the small business center, these are all free services. Exactly. You can schedule an appointment with Taylor at any time and be mm-hmm. like, Hey, mm-hmm. I have a question about my logo color or whatever it is anything and it's it's free so it's definitely a resource that yeah. small businesses should be. That's my biggest pitch that I try and provide yeah. to people is like, just ask me a question. Yep. You know what I mean? Definitely. You don't have to come in for an hour consultation to go over business planning. Oh, I do recommend it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, a second opinion is, is one of the best things I feel like I can offer. Definitely. Uh, or a brainstorming session like we mentioned earlier. Yep. Uh, just to bounce ideas back and forth, right? Uh, especially at the very low cost of nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, no it, 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 only, it only serves you as spending time, which obviously is valuable. But um, 
if you can kind of uh, have a little mastermind session or just a, an idea bouncing session from somebody who's removed from the business, right? Yeah. That's one of the biggest things is that I'm not emotionally invested. I'm exactly. invested in the sense that I want to see everybody I speak with be successful yeah, exactly. in whatever capacity they're looking for. Um, but uh, my money is invested into this business. My emo- This isn't my baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's easy to kind of like have an emotional response as a business owner yeah. because you're, it's yours. It's, it's you, right? Yeah. Uh, so to have that ability to kind of take a step back and get some uh, like a third party opinion on something or just an outside opinion on something that again isn't necessarily friends or family who yeah. <laughs> may also be slightly yeah. uh, rose colored but yeah uh, right. yeah so I recently I brought in a family member to speak with mm. with Taylor right and it's it's cool to see that very beginning process and how Taylor can help you kind of sort through exactly what you're after definitely so like right within the first little bit we're like okay do we want to do this no that doesn't make a whole lot of sense you really helped narrow down what we wanted to mm-hmm. do and kind of also weigh in on the pros mm-hmm. and the cons of things yeah. and so actually since then he's totally changed his mind by the way we're no going, kidding we're going a bit of a different route oh, but no it was kidding. still it was still it was still very valuable so uh, that's one cool of the best things that. too right so the business planning plug is the, uh, one of the biggest things with business planning is that it tells you to do something and it tells you not to do something right, mm-hmm. right? so when they get into the statistics side of things of saying small business businesses aren't statistically successful it's likely because they didn't take the time to figure out whether or not this was going to be a successful venture yeah so if you put the time into planning and and having the dollars make sense and then making decisions based off of numbers as opposed to emotions or what you think or what you'd like to think uh then you start probably finding at least you put you position yourself to be in the best chance to be successful yeah uh or you walk away and you move on to what the next one is or you pivot and you revamp whatever it might be right yeah. So, yeah, if I can get people to at least start asking why. Um, and the other thing I always tell people, too, is when it comes to business planning, it might look like an overwhelming mountain you got to climb to create a business plan. But oftentimes, if you're thinking about starting this business, you have 95% of the information in your head. It's just about getting it out of there mm-hmm. and yep. putting it onto a piece of paper yep. that you can start moving forward with. So yeah. uh, it's not exactly daunting. It's just uh, until you can start showing yourself the benefit and, and realizing that's not going to be as difficult as you might have originally thought. Yeah, you start running, for sure. Yeah. Did you watch the Super Bowl? I did. I did watch it for the most part. I uh, I boogied in the fourth quarter uh, so I could go to sleep because about that adulting thing again. Okay. Right. <laughs> did you watch any ads? Uh you know what? Nothing. Nothing honestly stood out to me. Okay. On the ad front, I I'll tell you one of the things that always stands out to me in Canadian advertisement uh, is te- um, not Tesla. Um, oh my God. Uh, cell phone company, big telco cell phone. Tell us. T- thank you very much. Uh, tell us. Their white background. And their white background with all the animals. An animal jumping around or something. Yeah, like they've that, been right? doing that for it's a while. Iconic. Yeah. 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 So anytime I see that white background, I tell us. You know it's tell us. Yeah. Yeah. So I watched I watched the American Super Bowl version. Okay. And what yeah. I noticed with all the ads this year, well, most of them, every single one used culture for their marketing. So I saw one with Dwight Schrute from The Office. Mm-hmm. And if you know anything about Netflix and their statistics, off The Office, yes, it's an old show, but it is one of the most okay. watched shows on Netflix. And actually, I believe NBC is starting their own platform and they're taking The Office away really? from Netflix. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. Netflix, yeah. But everything played on culture. So for example, we saw Baby Yoda with Star Wars, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we saw we just saw that uh, um, the um, the peanut company, what is it, what is the peanut company called? Planters. Uh, yeah, Planters. They it. killed the, the Mr. Peanut in a commercial before the Super Bowl, and then their Super Bowl commercial was Baby Peanut <laughs> or Baby Nut or something. That's awesome. Wow. And like in the, that, they had the, the group, Kool-Aid group Man group. and Mr. Clean in the same commercial. Wow. So everything was really playing on culture and nostalgia. Nostalgia. nostalgia and I think that huge. those two things combined make a really powerful advertisement. Transformers, it, Marvel. Yep. Like every, everything yep. that we're getting fed today is nostalgia. Yep. It's kind of crazy. And it's interesting watching all the Super Bowl ads. That's that's every single one played on culture and a little bit of nostalgia. Okay. And even with the Dwight Schrute one, I don't know if you guys have watched The Office. Uh, bits in here. I've yeah. watched it a ridiculous amount. <laughs> so, um, so Dwight Schrute's all about paper. He doesn't want paper to change this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. And Little Caesars wanted to announce that they're now doing delivery. And so what they've done is it's the it's um, this their delivery is the best thing since sliced bread or sliced pizza, I think okay. is what they called it. Anyway, it was just really interesting, and Dwight's all mad and trying to find innovative ways to make the paper, the pizza better. And right, it was really right. cool. Yeah. It was really cool. But yeah, those were the two takeaways for me that I saw. It was culture and nostalgia. No kidding. Did you see the Hyundai commercial? Yeah. So it was another office actor. What was it actor. called? 
What they um, what they do? It, it was like a play on the Boston accent. Yes, Smart Park, Smart Park, Smart Park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that. It was hilarious. There's an actor from The Office. Yeah, yes, so a few of those guys. Uh, Krasinski or whatever, John Maybe. Krasinski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's okay. the guy. I got the YouTube, the top. Uh, yeah, the top Event? ads or whatever. Yeah. That's I just hilarious. watched the Super Bowl for the ads. Although the Super Bowl this year was awesome. Yeah. It was nice to see somebody other than the Patriots on. Yeah. Talk and, about uh, losing a game. And yeah, and that ending there. The last the last half was really good. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, it was entertaining for sure. Yeah. You know, on the nostalgia topic, uh, a couple uh, shows that have popped up on Netflix are, I think it was like uh, the toys we grew up with and maybe the TV shows oh. that we grew up with or something yep. like that. Yep. And it goes back to all these like uh, Bandai toys or whatever uh uh, like Ninja Turtles and but it's just like it's crazy to keep seeing all these things popping up because so many people are just going back to revisit yeah. revisit what they yeah. once had right humans are weird yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. not unlike Champion coming back and yeah that, that things, too right? the only reason one. why I'm wearing this yeah. is because they do so well on Instagram yeah they made it come back yeah it's Huge crazy come back it's crazy. Yeah. Back in the, I always tell people back in my uh, uh, the bullying era back in the day where if you were champion, yeah, yeah that, that wasn't too yeah. long ago. But now yeah. their their sweaters are so eighty dollar nice. sweater. Yeah, their sweaters are really nice. It's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I also saw uh, Byway uh, is opening up a store again. Okay, Byway. I'm not even familiar. Uh, there with you that go. Brand. There you yeah. go. So Byway, uh, Byway was I don't want to call it a dollar store, uh, but it was like a, a cheaper branded yeah. kind of value bargain. Bargain shop uh, when I was growing up in grade school, and uh, I just saw, I don't know if it's in Toronto or where, mm-hmm. but uh, so they've been deceased, let's say, uh, right. for probably 20 plus ish years, and now they're uh, opening up a store again. Cool, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool watching things come back. Definitely yeah. nostalgia sells, yeah, mm-hmm. for, sure. for sure, for sure. Yeah, speaking of the commercials, we actually might mount a TV, and I'm curious to know what you think of this, and show ads as like a segment on the podcast. Yeah. So we can actually watch something. Ask our guests' opinion yeah. on stuff. Be like, hey, yeah. what do you think of this new Mercedes-Benz commercial? Yeah. Like, what's the takeaway? It's just an idea that we have, because we're yeah. going to be playing with this. I think next, anything that uh, you can kind of continue adding an inter- inter- interactive component and yeah. kind of continuing to uh, be as engaging as possible. Yeah. Uh, Excuse me, it's always a good idea. Yeah. I mean, we'll have to get pretty good at describing for those that just listen to the audio version. Mm-hmm. That's true. There's a car yeah. driving on ice. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but, but the majority, as we've seen from the first episode, they're watching the podcast. At least for yeah. now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I enjoyed watching it. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, so with these pitch uh, competitions that I'll go down and volunteer for in Toronto from time to time, I'm listening to a podcast called The Pitch. Okay. Uh, and it's phenomenal. So I think if, if you ever spun pitches into the podcast yeah I think that'd, that'd be, be another, interesting uh, kind of cool idea yeah that would be cool and it's, it's huge for uh, business listeners right because you have to pitch your business all the time whether you're looking at like venture capital or seed funding or it's true anything like that you, yeah. you always have to have some form of a pitch ready to go pitch, right and it's funny even when i'm out pitching or i'm 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 out speaking with a potential client or whatever. It's a pitch. I almost get bored of my own my mm-hmm. own continual pitch. I'm like, oh, but they haven't heard it. Yeah. I feel yeah. because I've said it so many times in my head and I've said it so many times verbally, yeah. I feel like everybody's getting tired of it, but nobody hears it over and over and over. Only over, you right? do. Only I do. Only so I feel do. like I'm getting over yeah. it. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. I think we're kind of spoiled. And I think this is something that the three of us have in common mm-hmm. is you get to consult and talk to people who are starting so many different kinds of businesses. Mm-hmm. And as a marketing company, we kind of get the same privilege. Like we get to work with all yeah, walks of life definitely. in terms of businesses. So we get to learn like a little bit about about different industries that we mm-hmm. never like you fully to commit to. And, right, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. it's nice to learn like the ins and outs of them, how to market them. Yeah. For sure. It is cool. And the relationship building and stuff like that, yes. right? It is, yeah. it is definitely cool. Yeah, yeah. So sure. I think we should wrap it up, but I do have one question. Andre from YouTube, actually gave us this this um, this idea right we want to, to end the show with a tip so for your case maybe you want to give a tip on somebody starting a business maybe you want to give them a general life tip whatever you think that you can bring value and and add um, mm-hmm. we'd love to hear a tip yeah so I guess I'll say kind of two things uh, is that never expect things to be easy and the road that's worth walking down is always going to be the hard one mm-hmm. so it's a worthwhile road isn't it's never easy to walk down uh, but the second thing is is to ask, you know, uh, ask for help, uh, ask for support, ask for opinions. Uh, don't be afraid to ask things. Don't just uh, take your own opinion and think that's going to work necessarily. And if you have resources around you, like a small business center or just uh, professional colleagues, whatever the case is, ask questions. Um, and don't necessarily make assumptions if, if you don't have to, right? Yeah. So that would be uh, probably my biggest thing. It's awesome. Coaching is blowing up, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Online like, coaching, coaching yeah, in general, business coaching, executive yep. coaching, sales coaching, coaching, you name it. 
Uh, so oftentimes the boss of a business, the, the owner of a, of a business uh, might feel like, who do, who do I ask? Mm-hmm. Right. But you got to have somebody to ask something yeah. to, right? Yeah. Uh, no different than I do. And so be it. So just yeah. don't be afraid to ask questions. Awesome. Thank you. For anybody listening, like Taylor's helped us with, like you were saying earlier, anything from technical things, like mm-hmm. how to file HST back yeah. in the day when yeah. <laughs> we needed to start uh, paying taxes, anything from that to like more macro level discussions about like, you know, our branding or what kind of services mm-hmm. we're going to do anything. So, you know, economic development was just instrumental in Definitely. helping us get to where we are today. And it's free. It's, it's free. free. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Rosemary. Shout out to you, Taylor. Shout yeah. out to Andrew. Shout, Shout out to the live room. audience. That we yeah. Have. We got They're on their phones right now. The <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the clapping. Yeah, um, yeah I guess uh, kind of takeaway is basically you can reach economic development uh, 360, 519-360-1998. Uh, you just ask for uh, economic development or small business. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and social media. Uh, you can follow myself on uh, on Instagram. What's it's, your handle? Uh, CK Biz Consult. So CK B I Z Consult. Awesome. Um, and then uh, for myself, uh, contact info is out there on the internet, investck.ca. But you can DM, text, email, whatever's cool. easy to get in touch with me. Do it. Awesome. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching slash listening. Uh, this has been episode two of the Exordia Creative Podcast. Stay tuned next week for our next guest, which. We'll keep that a secret again. (laughs) You'll see.